<laughs> right. Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much. And in today's video, today's video, I'm very much interested in today's video. It's not like the usual ones. And I know a lot of you guys will learn so much from it. So if you are new here, please go ahead, subscribe. And if you are new here, my name is Fidel Osman. And I talk about studying living and share my experiences and as an immigrant or international student in Germany. Right. So in today's video, I have here with me Boniface. I'm going to let him introduce himself. So Boniface, you tell us a little bit about yourself, your where you are from, your study program. You know, just something briefly. <laughs> uh, my name is Boniface, and I am from Nigeria, um, from the eastern part of Nigeria, Anambra State. And yeah, I'm I'm here in Germany. Um, I came here as a student. I'm actually still doing my master's program, kind of. And yeah, that is just a brief introduction. Okay, so Boniface, take us to you. Are a student in which university? Technical University of Munich. Oh, TM, that's a very, really, like, big, big school, like, um, well-known school, school, the top. The best yeah, so, Germany. And, yeah. And then what program are you studying? Biology. Biological science, biology. Biology, yeah. Okay, so how hard was it to get into TUM? It wasn't hard for me to be honest. I did really? not even do any. I did not even do any interview. I just applied and I got admission. In fact, uh, I applied close to like seven schools, and most of the schools in smaller cities rejected me. So TUM was the first school that gave me admission. So. Mm. Did you have yeah. to write any language tests like TOEFL, no. IELTS, right? No, so that just, the, I, I, there is what we call English proficiency certificate that I collected from my university in Nigeria. So that's what I submitted. I did not write any IELTS or anything like that. No. Right. So let's get into the main details of this video. So now what interested me is I know you transitioned to tech. So like yeah. you said, as you said, your master's program, what you came to study in Germany is biological science. But along the way, some way, somehow, you you transition transition into the tech space. Tell me, how did you do this? So what um, motivated you? I think the first question is what actually motivated you to leave biological science or biology into the tech space? <clears throat> I don't want to work in a lab. Okay. And I don't want to be doing all this nine to five hustle of always going out and entering the train. I don't have strength for that because in tech, you work most times at home. Right. Understand? So I just want a much more balanced lifestyle for myself because if I, if I work in the, in the biology lab or in the research lab, I have to be going every day. You don't do research mm -hmm. at home, you do research in the lab. I'm wearing lab coat, I'm going out. Right. That's not the life, that's not the life I want for myself. So that's why I decided to look for something else. Okay, so I know a lot of people have this mindset of yours that oh maybe they will, they just want like a gateway to actually enter Germany. When they enter, they would like to explore different areas. So let me ask you, how was it? How was the transition like? How did you? Where did you sort out information to start study tech classes? Where did you go to do this? You understand? Take us to so actually my intention to change into tech started from Nigeria and uh, during the during actually it started during COVID in 2020. So then I was working as a Chinese translator. So if you don't know, I speak fluent Chinese too. So, but during COVID, everything shut down. So I needed something to keep myself busy. So then I always see some of my friends in their status, they are learning programming. I just decided, let me learn. So then I just started learning just to, you know, during COVID people, people like try to look for something to do, passion and all those things. <clears throat> so I started learning. But after COVID, when we started, when we went back to work, I, I stopped. I was not doing it again. Then, before I moved to Germany, I already know that my skill in Chinese language will be completely useless here. Or even though, yeah, there are some Chinese companies here, but the opportunity is not so much like the way it was in, in, in Nigeria. So, and actually in Europe, language is a secondary skill, not a, not a primary skill. So in Nigeria, it was like a primary skill for me because 
I never had to look for a job. There are always company looking for people that speak Chinese, you understand? So I now said, okay, if I come here, I need to switch to tech because what I'm going to study in my bachelor's is not what I actually want to do. What I'm going to study in my master's is not what I actually want to do. So I need to switch to tech. Then I now went back to the Udemy course I bought in COVID. I bought a Udemy course there. I went back there. It was Python. And I started studying it on my own. But I wasn't consistent at all. Then I now decided if I come to Germany, I have to look for a tech school. Because sometimes school makes you to be more consistent than just learning on your own. Yeah. But I decided that I want to look for a tech school, either paid tech school or free tech school. Then I happened to meet someone in the Nigerian German embassy during my visa process. So the girl has an elder sister here in Germany. So and now we're just like discussing and I told her, when I come to Germany, I would like to do tech. She was like, her elder sister is actually in one tech school in Germany. And it's actually free. I said, really? She said, yes. She said her elder sister already registered her <coughs> in for the school because the school is three to four months, I think four months, and they don't take students until one until one section is over. So she she has already applied and she's waiting for the next section. Then I asked her the name of the school. She said she doesn't know, but she inquired for my sister and, I, I, and told me. So I applied for the school from Nigeria. I applied for the school already. Then after I came to Germany, I, I started doing survival jobs, like so working yeah. in a supermarket, just like, you know, these student jobs. Mm -hmm. Then three months after I came to Germany, the school now contacted me about the my application and told me I've been scheduled for an interview. So the interview is not, not it's nothing serious. It's just to, because it's a free textbook. So it's just to know what level you are and maybe advise you on how to start. Maybe they'll tell you to, your level is so small, you can start from the beginning, introduction to computer. Or if your level is a little bit okay, you can start, you can start from the intermediate or the advanced stage. So, because I've been learning Python on my own gradually, gradually, so I decided to apply for intermediate stage. So I did the interview and they gave me admission. So I started the tech school in September 2022. Meanwhile, I came to Germany May of 2022. And a few months later, that same year, I got admission in the tech school. So I now started learning. And after I started learning about tech, at like the first week I found out that <clears throat> what they teach in the intermediate stage, I already know it. So I now wrote to the school again and told them that I would like to move to the advanced stage because if I did intermediate stage and advanced stage, it would take me seven months to finish. But because I already know some things in the intermediate stage, I, apply, I wrote to the school, the school scheduled another interview for me with the teachers that are in the advanced stage and they asked me a question and I passed. So I now moved to the advanced stage. So I jumped two levels, the introduction stage, the intermediate stage, I just went to advanced. Mm -hmm. So I did it from September to December and I graduated. And the following year, I got my first internship. Okay, so before I move to that, I'm not a lot of people who want to like apply to this school. What's the name of the school I can put in there? If you're interested, I'm going to put the details of the school in the description box. So, yeah, you guys can check it out. And like, the, as you applied, what documents do you need to apply for this school? You don't need. You don't need anything. Just apply. You, the, oh, you just you feel see, like online uh, apply, fill a form. You don't have yeah. to upload any documents. No. Oh, okay. It's so a, if, if a, you have any background in tech, nothing, you can still apply. Right. Okay. Let me just tell you. Let me just say a little bit about the school. Yes. So the school started. The school started in 2014. It is a voluntary organization. I think either 2016 or 2014. I'm not sure. I'm not that sure. So it, it started with uh, the woman that started it. She's from Denmark. So she comes. She came to Germany, and she happened to be in the refugee camp. And she mm -hmm. find she found refugees, asylum seekers that actually have tech skills. So one of them asked for a laptop that he would like to apply for jobs and all those things. Yeah. 
Then she gave him the laptop. When she came back for follow up, she found out that there are other people that are also interested in laptops. Some of them want to. Some of them want to learn. Others already have the skills already. Then she now started the organization to like. It started only for asylum seekers from this first time. It started for asylum seekers to help asylum seekers get skills because if they are able to get a job, they are, the the government can fast track their asylum process yeah. and all those things. So from there, other people now became interested, like wives of experts here in Germany, because you know some tech people, they, they go to their home country and marry wives and they come here. Some of them don't really have a skill. They are, stay at, they are staying at home without any skill. Mm -hmm. Then they now started accommodating this type of women to uh, teach them skills so that they will have skills. Mm -hmm. Then later, students now became interested. Students in Germany now became interested. So they, not, they now made it free for everybody. You understand? And the teachers who teach are teachers that work in the industry. They are professional teachers. In fact, one of my teachers is a lecturer in TUM. So they are very, they have very, very qualified, very, very good teachers. Right. And as an ex-student and now working in the industry, I can also apply to teach in the school. Right, right, right. That's yeah. very, very interesting. So let's move on. You said you could, then you got an internship after you finished um your program, which was for four months. That the mm -hmm. tech. What did you do in the in the tech? What exactly like what program? I know you guys have software, back end, whatever. I don't know the names. But I, which did, one did you? I, did data, I did data analysis. So data analysis, we, right? We 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 learn Python as a programming language. Then towards the end of the program, they taught us Power BI and SQL. Mm, right, right, right. But so my after own, that, oh, my own. Yeah, please go. Yeah, on. my own set. My own set were heavy on Python. So each set have re different requirement depending on the teachers that they, they wow, get in so that particular windy. set. Can you hear the yeah, wind? So it's very windy on my side. Yeah. You can hear yeah, it. So yeah. So each each set has different requirements. So my my set we did more of Python than any other tools there. So that's the way it is. Okay. Okay. So let's move to the internship. You got an internship after your four yeah. months program. So tell, tell us how it went. Like mm -hmm. how was it like applying for the internship? <laughs> Frustrating. It's frustrating. Mm -hmm. You have to, if you are, if you are changing career, you have to be very patient because these recruiters consider a lot of things. They consider background. My background is purely biology. I do not have any tech. I do not take any tech subjects. I, in fact, the only play it was only in my first year, second semester of my bachelor's that I took statistics. I did not take any statistic courses. I did not take any programming courses. So it was difficult. Then coupled with the fact that I had no prior experience. So when applying for internship, I'm competing with students who are studying master's in data science, students who are studying master's in computer science, mm -hmm. people that have prior experience from their home country coming to Germany. So I was competing with a lot of people. So I got so many rejections to be honest. In fact, it got to a point I started like questioning myself if this is actually the right path because I was not getting anything. Yeah. And I was I so frustrated. So. But I kept on applying, kept on applying, and eventually I got one. And the one I got, initially they rejected me. So because I went to the last stage of the interview and they rejected me. So they gave it to another girl. So when they now contacted the girl and asked her when she's going to start. So it happened that the girl mm. is, at that time, she's doing an internship, which will end in the next two weeks. So her idea was to finish this internship and start another one immediately. So when the recruiter found out that, oh, she's doing another one, she said, no, there's someone that is not doing anything that, and they want the person immediately. So let them just give the person the job. That's how I got the job. Initially, yeah. I was rejected. So I was so lucky. <laughs> so lucky. Yeah. Interesting thing about all this tech, not only tech, like in general, once mm -hmm. you have one experience in your CV, it's going to help you 
with your with applying for jobs like in the future mm -hmm. either for a full-time or for another internship right. so you just need this one professional experience in your cv then it's going mm -hmm. to help you so yeah. i have a question so whilst doing all this this program and then also doing your internship were you going to school at the same time how are you doing it <sighs> it's not easy school and hold? <laughs> because when i was doing when i was going for the tech school yeah I also needed to look for something to do that because the, the interesting thing about the test school is that it's, it's evening program. It was seven to nine mm -hmm. at night. You understand? And it's only two times in a week. Right. So I had opportunities to also go to school and also work because, you know, in Germany, you have to be working to pay bills. Yep. So as of then, I was working, I was working in Penny Supermarket. So I was working in Penny Supermarket then going to school and also and also um, going for the tech school. Mm -hmm. so, but sometimes sometimes my schedule clashes and I just I just focus on the tech school and the work I'm doing. You understand? Yeah. So because before coming to Germany, I already have a target. I already yes. have a motive. I already know what I'm. Yeah. So I just followed it down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. You got an internship and then internship was done. What was, what was the next thing for you now? Well, after I got an internship and I finished the internship, because the internship I worked as a business intelligent analyst in right. Munich. So after then, uh, there was no, because normally in internship, if there is a role for you, the company normally retains you. Right. But there is no, uh, there is no, free role in the company and then I, I, I they didn't return me so i had to start looking for after the internship i started looking for a full-time job and it was another different type of hell altogether so <laughs> <laughs> it was another different type of hell i kept on applying rejection but the interesting thing was that because i had some sort of experience in my cv i was actually yeah. getting interviewed i was actually that's getting a good thing that's a good thing I, yeah, I feel like so, imagine if you didn't have in, you didn't have this internship prior to job searching, it would have even mm. very hard getting an interview. The, you know, initially, initially I had this mindset that entry level roles is for people who just came out from school and people <laughs> who just learned. This. So when I after I finished the test school, I was applying for entry level roles, and it was automatic rejections. It was someone that asked me that, see, that, that it is entry level does not mean you will not come with any experience at all. That mm -hmm. I should go and get mm -hmm. an I should go and get I should go and get an internship experience. Then I started applying for internship and I was still rejected for the internship position. So it was I was frustrated again at the same time. But after I did the internship and I started applying for full-time job, I actually started getting interviews. I got interview with Tesla. I got interview with, with there's one company called uh, BASF. I got yeah, an interview. Yeah, yeah, I know BASF. Yeah, it's an yes, engineering. I an yeah, I got an interview with them. I got an interview with quite a number of companies in Munich, but some of them, after the first stage, I get rejected. Some of them, I move to the second stage, I get rejected. That BASF, uh, BAS, BASF. BASF. Yeah. I got to the last stage of the interview. That was last year, September or so. I was already, oh God, oh God, let them give me this job. Oh, is it the one you told me? Like, yeah, and I and I finally got, and I finally, oh my God, it was, it was painful, very painful. So, so I got to, take, take us through. I don't know. You have a job, right? Before we get mm. there, but BASF was there. The one that you have to go to the last stage. You were, yes, I went to the you were left with it was left with two of you, two candidates yeah. to take us through that one. Then you tell us about your job, the job you have now. <laughs> so BSF, BSAF, I applied, it was a data analyst role. Right. So I applied, I applied for it and I got the first interview. And you know, the normal first interview is get to know you yeah. and all those know your experience. So they asked me questions, I replied. And then I was fresh out of internship. So I had a lot of, and you know, one thing with job is, 
if you if you graduate or if you finish your internship and you don't get a job almost immediately some of the things you learn you start forgetting them mm. and another thing is that most of the time you will not even have motivation to say okay after internship let me keep on studying i'm up upskilling myself you just want to finish the internship and start you understand yeah. so then i just graduated from the internship and i got the interview then so they were asking me question uh, initially after the first interview the second interview was more technical so they were asking me question I, I was answering them and um like most of the things they asked me i know it already because i was just fresh out of yeah. internship I, I have the knowledge i know the skills and after then after the second interview uh, they now gave me the another in a uh, date for the last interview they said with one other candidate so then they asked me questions i answered and then i said they are going to get back to me so the first week i did not hear from them i was like hmm, what is happening mm -hmm. so i kept on I kept on saying, oh God, please let me get this job. I was so I was I was just waiting to get the job. And after some time, I did not hear from them. And I decided to write to the HR. I said, okay, I did this interview like two weeks ago and yeah. I've not heard from them. Before. Then the next day, oh, that's they are taking their time to decide that they are going to get back to me. The next day I received a rejection mail. So at a point I was like, maybe I shouldn't have right uh, <laughs> To do my but that was, that was not the that was not the yeah. case. That was not, yeah. That was not the case. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just not for you. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us now, you have a job now, mm -hmm. right? So how was this one, this recruitment, the job you, you have now? I think this job that I have now is the, I think is it was the easiest process that. I have gone through in the tech right. industry so easy because before I got this job, I actually did an interview with uh, Alliance. Alliance is mm -hmm. also an insurance company. So I went to the first stage, went to the second stage, and went to the last stage. And that one was physical interview. It was the first physical interview right. I did. And after then, after so the last interview actually, you know, normally in the tech industry. At every stage, they tell you what you are going to do. They don't, they don't just come up with something. They'll tell you, okay, yeah. this next stage is going to be technical, so maybe you prepare. So I've done the first and the second stage with the Alliance. So the third stage, the last stage, it was like, there's a particular team member that was on vacation. Mm -hmm. So in, in the email, they, say, they, they told me that in this other interview stage, I'm coming to come and meet the team member that I did not meet during the first and the second stage. I said, oh, all right. So when I came to the to the office, because it was physical in Munich, yeah. I just saw a very big screen with, with <laughs> keyboard, and they told me I'm going to do a live coding interview. I said, what? No prior information. It doesn't work that way in, in tech. You can't just give somebody. How they yeah. do it is okay. The next stage is going to be a coding interview. They will allow you to prepare, both mentally and also refresh your your brains with code i did not prepare for anything i did not do it and i just came and they gave me they tested me on python and power bi 15 15 mm -hmm. minutes power bi own i was able to finish his part but the python own i needed more time and it was like 15 questions i answered seven and they just told me time up so after that interview, I already know I will not get the job because I know that if the other candidate is able to finish, he will get the job. Yeah. And the next day, the next day they called me and, and told me, sorry, they have they have oh, gone to God. I was so pissed. I was so pissed. <laughs> oh, that's at crazy. That, at that point, I said, I'm not applying for any job. <laughs> In fact, I said, I, I, I said, I'm not applying. It. So, but one day on a faithful day, I was just, you know, sometimes what happens how I normally do it is if I'm if I'm if I'm alone, I'll maybe press my Instagram, just go through my Instagram. Then from there, I'll move all that over to Facebook, just yeah. see what is happening there. Then I'll move to TikTok, scroll, 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 scroll. Then once I scroll all these things, I don't have anything, I don't have anything to scroll again. And I decided to go to LinkedIn. And I decided right. to go to LinkedIn. So when I go to LinkedIn, I went to the job section and I saw DHF. I was like, 
DHL. DHL is even a bigger company than Alex. <laughs> They are even going to reject me. What is the point? What is yeah. the point? Because at the point I was targeting all these medium scale to small scale companies. Because large scale companies they are very competitive. Yeah. I say what is it? But one man just say, just try your luck. Mm -hmm. So I went. I apply. I do not even send any cover letter. Just yeah. put my CV and submit. And after like three days or so, I got an interview. So the interview, uh, when the interview day came, it was two guys. There was not like first stage, second stage, last stage. They asked everything they needed to ask in one interview. That's asked so. me questions. And like I knew they were going to ask me a particular question about Azure. Azure is a cloud environment. So I prepared, mm. some, slide. I prepared some slide in case they asked me the question. So... The day of the interview, they first of all asked me about machine learning. So I answered machine learning. So before the interview ended, the other team member, Sven, which is now my who is now my colleague, was like, Can you tell us what you know about Azure? I say, Good, that is what I prepared for. So <laughs> I now told them, I now told them, can I share my screen? I say yes. And I started doing presentation. I say, okay, wow. you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. Then the woman was like, she's impressed, and this is exactly the architecture that they use there. And she told me there and then that this is a big bonus for me because some of the interview, some of some of the candidates they interview mm -hmm. don't really know it. Yeah. But after then, I did not really get my hope high because some of yeah. these they will, they, will, they will use sweet mouth and tell you at this you are good. At the end of the day, they will send you rejection. Mm -hmm. The next day, around 12 p.m., I received a call. You have the job. I say, wow. Are you serious? You have the job. Like you didn't even and believe. I, I didn't believe. And I was in the train. I was in the train going home from I was going home from somewhere. And I got a call and I was like, you have the job. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. And I was like, really? She said yes. And I, I, I felt like screaming in the train. <laughs> so because DHL is a very large company. And yeah, this, it's, and it's a huge company, firm. Yeah, and this company, this experience in my CV is going to it's help me a lot. Fix that, to be honest. So, yeah. So right now, I'm having more experiences because in the long run, I want to apply for fully hundred percent remote jobs. So right. this top, this type of jobs are very, very competitive. They are very, very competitive. So most most times, it's people who are already in the industry. Work for work in the industry for some years, then mm -hmm. the NASA applying for this type of job is usually very competitive. Recently, I saw one on Friday. The salary is hundred thousand to one hundred twenty-five thousand uh, euros per year, and it just need just three years experience. And hundred to one, yeah, hundred to one hundred twenty-five thousand euros fully remote. My and you can work from anywhere you can work from anywhere in europe yeah not just so this is this is my target this is my target in the future your target oh my god so, but, but you need experience to apply for the job so now if i apply in this if i apply for the job i'll get rejection the next day because <laughs> because the truth is that for you to be able to work on your own without any mm -hmm. assistance you need experience yeah. like right now, like right now in my job in DHL, because DHL is a huge company and their mm -hmm. code, they have code, they are, they are, some of their code have almost 300 to 400 lines. Mm. So it's huge. So most of the time I need assistance. I will ask my yeah. colleague, okay, what do you that day? So this type of company needs people that are confident enough to mm. work with that assistance. You understand? Mm -hmm. So so you need experience to apply. Yeah, you job. get there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you get there. So let me ask you, right, now that you have a full-time job, are you still using your students? Are you still, like, embarking on this, your master's program, or you've enrolled no, out? What's going no, to happen? Right now, right now it, it, the role started as an internship. Okay, okay. So I'm still on a student visa. but Okay, okay. But uh, how DHL works is once you enter... You can only leave if you want to leave. Okay, yeah. Because DHL 
how it works is that they are reshoveling them, their workers mm -hmm. within the team because most of the teams work with the same tools. Yeah. So right now, I started as, a, as an intern, and if there is a budget in my department, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll move into a full-time job. But yeah. if there's not a budget, the team, the 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 manager will mm -hmm. take me, will assign me to another department, either supply chain or another department to yeah. work. So, yeah. And most of the people that I met there, working there, started as an intern. And yeah. They moved yeah. And that's it. So right now I'm still on a student visa, yeah. and uh, and hopefully in the next three, four, five months I'll convert it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you finally convert it, I think I don't think you're going to continue this year master's program. That's no, 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 no. Easy for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. What are you going to use it for? Like it's, no. it's just useless right now. So now the main thing mm -hmm. is like your tech space. This is very interesting. I think I'm sure a lot of people would have learned so much from from you. At least you guys have learned, right? You know what I've learned from this. What is yours is yours. Yeah. Because when you look back at the other interviews you've done, you are you'll be glad that oh, thank God I didn't get those companies. Thank God I got this one. I'm yes. sure you reflect and be like, DHL is a is a big deal. Like massive. Okay. Yeah, massive. so that that's the, the goal. Like in, in if you're in Germany or in Europe, you don't apply for five jobs and go and sleep and see you didn't get a job. You are pushing to 100, 200 jobs applying. The rejection you collect, but at the end of the day. <laughs> and one thing I want to say before we yeah. conclude DHL actually um, gives people sponsorship to come to Germany for internship. Mm if you are someone that is an expert and you are staying outside uh, Germany, always check the DHL LinkedIn website. They have jobs, the, either full-time jobs or internship. Like mm -hmm. most of my, let me not say most, but I've seen like five to six Africans which yeah. who come from Africa for internship. And after then they converted their visa to full-time. I know in my team currently, I work yeah. in customer solution, uh, customer solution and innovation, CSI. In my department, we have two Tunisian women who came from Tunisia. They got an a six month internship. Right. DHA gave them the sponsorship, the visa, and everything. They came to this to do internship, and they yeah. and after then they retained them. Some of them continued working in the department others move to other departments because in DHL it is a rule that as long as it's an entry level role yeah. you can apply to someone outside if mm -hmm. there's someone already within the company they, they give them priority first so you can only apply you can only take people outside if it's a senior position yeah. and there's nobody within the company that will take the senior position but if it's a middle scale to entry level position they look within their interns. And we have so right. many interns in DHL, so many interns. Mm -hmm. So if you, are, if you are someone that has tech skills and you are looking for an internship, try applying for DHL internship. Right. DHL. Because me, when I was competing, I was competing with people from other countries, not just Germany. Mm -hmm. But one of the reasons why I got the job was my interview was good. And another thing is that my manager said that I'm able to start immediately. Because some of the other candidates are from the other countries and they will need time to process visa. Yeah. But even at that, there are so many of my colleagues now, they came from Africa, Germany, sorry, Tunisia, they're mostly Tunisia, Egypt. They came here, they came from their countries to Germany for internship and they never went back. The DHL returned. So wow, that, that's really good information. So you guys should check DHL's website. Okay, for internships, if you are in the tech space, I mean, I know like right now tech is good, but I know like there's there's job competition everywhere in every field. Every, every <laughs> it's just it's just it's just up to you to be good in whatever field you are in. So yeah, yeah. okay, you've got that for me. Thank you so much, um, Boniface. What's your last words before we leave? Your last words to people who want to come to Germany. <laughs> See, yeah. Uh... I will advise you to have a plan before coming mm. because most times people just want to go abroad and you end up seeing some people four years, five years, six years, and they have not really achieved anything. Mm. 
You understand? Just know what you want to do. You mustn't do tech. You mustn't do tech. If you want to work in engineering, once you come here, from your first day of your master, start looking for internship. You don't need to wait till this. Thing. There is someone I watch on your channel who is in engineering that I've worked with, I think BMW and mm -hmm. Tesla. Yeah. yeah. Once you just come, start looking for inter because you need the experience. So if you graduate with that experience, you're on your own. You're on your Very own. Very important. start looking for experience. Start, start fast, fast. And learn German too. German is very German, important. German, no, it's very important. <laughs> because some people see, feel, oh, you learn in English. You will not know how crucial German is until you yeah. start looking for a job. Exactly. That is when you know how German, crucial German is. So learn German be focused and that is it. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. See you again in another one. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>